Hi everyone, uh, this is our first lecture of week three. Um, we're going to be talking about the scientific method. Uh, on a technical note, I have moved to a side room in my house uh, where my parrot isn't and where you shouldn't hear the train noises as much. So this should be a better recording. So today we're going to be talking uh, briefly about a few things that have to do with the scientific method and then we're going to be talking about the scientific method itself. Uh, most sociologists believe that they should not allow their personal beliefs to influence their research, um, but this isn't something that is absolutely agreed upon within sociology. Uh, Weber coined the term value-free sociology, stating that researchers should identify facts without allowing their own personal beliefs or biases to interfere. Now remember, Marx introduced this idea of praxis saying that um, our research should be used to make the world a better place. Um, what this usually looks like, how most sociologists and social scientists come down on this, is that it is okay to conduct research because you think it's needed to make the world a better place, but when you're doing the research itself, you need to actually present real viable research as opposed to just making up the numbers willy-nilly. Um, obviously, uh, there are some issues uh, in this. Uh, if this was, were a research ethics class, we'd spend at least a whole week on this, but um, it's not. So that's what you need to know, that term value-free sociology and compare it with praxis. So let's talk about the scientific method. The scientific method is a procedure or a set of procedures for acquiring knowledge that emphasizes collecting data through observation and experiment. Now you want to put down in your notes that the scientific method is different than specific research methods. This lecture is about the scientific method. Our next lecture uh, is about specific research methods. So the scientific method uh, consists of these steps. Uh, first, we do literature review, then we develop a hypothesis, determine variables, determine operational definitions, collect data, interpret results, and then we repeat as needed. So let's talk about each of those steps. In the literature review phase, first we determine what has been said about uh, the topic. We look at the scientific literature. And what the scientific literature is, is other journal articles that have been published in this regard. We also look at other academic um, books that have been published in this regard. We may take a look at non-academic books. We might take a look at really well-respected non-academic magazines, things like uh, National Geographic, which is well-respected but not quite academic. Um, we don't want to look at things like people or... Uh, other less than academic publications. Then we develop our hypothesis. We That is our testable uh, scientific statement uh, with an if-then um, statement, with our independent and our dependent variable. So let's say we're interested in race in America. We do our literature review. We uh, find out what's been said about race in America. And this is a real hypothesis I'm going to posit to you um, that has been tested. Uh, and we recognize that a lot of work has been done uh, to uh, wondering around the topic about dr the phenomena of driving while black. Are black men pulled over more often than other types, other people of different demographics? So our hypothesis would be if a person is a black male, he will be pulled over by police more often. That is a hypothesis. Uh, if the person is a black male, that is our independent variable, our, he will be pulled over more often by police. Dependent variable. So in this proposition, that's not necessarily saying it's true or not, yet in this proposition, if you are a black male, if this is true, you are a black male, you will be pulled over by police more often, dependent variable. 
And there's your hypothesis. Then we determine our, well, I actually blended those together. Uh, develop hypothesis, determine variables. That I kind of mix those into one phase. If you have questions on that, please email me. It's pretty, it's pretty clear, I think. Um, then we determine operational definitions. So what exactly do we mean by black male? That's relatively straightforward. Um, people of a certain racial category, but maybe we're not talking about um, all, maybe we're not talking about African Americans and people of African descent, so like African immigrants, right? So we might want to suss out what exactly we mean by that. What do we mean by pulled over by police? What if the car was already stopped with a flat tire and the police show up? Uh, is that count as being pulled over poli by police? So we'd have to think about that, right? Once we've determined what we actually want to do, we then want to collect our data. And in this, we want to figure out uh, what data do we want to collect? Uh, do we want to look at police records? Do we want to be present when these pullovers are happening? Uh, the research st study I'm thinking about specifically uh, did police ride along. So the researcher um, rode along with the police officer. He observed the situation happening. And uh, from there, he was able to make his conclusions. So uh, the process of riding around with the police officers, of um, actually uh, doing uh, that research and sitting with the police officers and the months that that took, that's the collect data phase. Then we interpret our results. So after you're done with your police ride-alongs, you sit down, you interpret the results of this data, you figure out, is your hypothesis actually accurate? Um, and that's the interpret results phase. And then you, you know, write up your research article. Uh, and then if there are any parts in there, uh, you repeat if needed. Uh, we don't have quite quite have time to talk about the results of uh, Dr. Ludman's uh, work, which is the specific research article I'm talking about. I'm sure some of you may be interested in that. I'll put a link to that uh, journal article up on our uh, website for this week if you are interested. Um, and then you repeat the research if needed. So this is just another way to talk about the um, the scientific method. So uh, our phase one would be identify a problem, phase two conduct literature review. This is just a different way of stating it. The reason why I include this circular model is because it allows us to um, to think about the scientific method in a different way. So for example, uh, maybe you conduct your literature review you form your hypothesis, but maybe your hypothesis isn't quite right. So you might want to, oh, I'm sorry. So maybe your hypothesis isn't quite right. Uh, so you want to, uh, go back and conduct your literature review again and come up with a new hypothesis. And you can do that. Uh, then you uh, choose a research design or method uh, and you can collect your data and you analyze your data. And that's going great too, but then you need a little more data. So you go from phase six back to phase five. The point is of this slide is that the scientific method is not absolutely rigid. It should be followed and it absolutely should be followed but if you have to go back and redo a phase, that's okay too. Or if you start in on phase five, that's okay as long as you go back and conduct phases one through four before you move on to phase six. Um, yeah, I just wanted to add that caveat there. The scientific method helps us determine a number of uh, phenomena that might be associated with our research. Uh, this, the scientific method helps us determine correlation. So correlation is a relationship between two variables. 
So in our example, uh, we might observe that uh, black people, black African-American males are reporting a greater pullover rate by police. And uh, we in our research might be able to find that it's not just people talking about it, it is a reality. That there is a relationship for some reason, African-American males are being pulled over more, more often. Okay. But that's not causation. There might be a relationship with it, but that's not saying that African-American males are being pulled off over more often by police um, because they are African-American males, right? So a correlation is saying that there's a relationship between those two variables. A causation says that if you are an African-American male, then you will be pulled over by police more often. Causation. If you have questions about that, please let me know. I, I think that's relatively clear. Or it could be a spurious correlation. So that is a relationship that seems to appear between two variables, but is actually caused by some external or intervening variable. Um, this is an outside factor, right? And this is the kind of problem that occurs with the scientific method that we try to suss out. Uh, there are others laid out in your methods chapter in the book. This is just an easy to understand example. Um, so, for example, with Ludman's work, he found that it actually is a spurious correlation that African-American males are pulled over more often but by police because they are of the identity African-American male. He found that it's actually a third factor having to do with how African-American males are treated by the rest of society. And then that factor is what causes police to pull over African-American males more often. It's a really cool, really detailed uh, study. Uh, and I absolutely, now that I say this, I'm going to give that link. Um, another example of a spurious correlation, if the African-American male uh, police example doesn't make sense to you, is the ice cream murder hypothesis that's laid out pretty well in your book. Um, the hypothesis that states, and it's obviously ridiculous, that if you consume ice cream, you're more likely to kill somebody. Um, that's laid out in your book. Uh, the reality of that matter is that both of those things happen more often in the summertime. Uh, if you need greater clarification, by all means, um, seek your book for that. So that's the end of our first lecture this week. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know, uh, and I will move on to the next lecture.